This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. The Los Angeles Dodgers faced the Baltimore Orioles at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore for Game 4 of the 1966 World Series on October 9th. The Orioles lead the best-of-seven series three games to none, and this is the NBC national broadcast of Game 4, featuring announcers Bob Prince and Vin Scully. This is the NBC Radio Network. This is WGY, 810 on your radio dial, and WGFM, Schenectady. Everybody and a very pleasant day to you, wherever you may be. The Gully, along with Bob Prince, welcoming you to Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland, and the 1966 World Series. Brought by Chrysler Corporation, makers of Chrysler Plymouth, by the world's best seller, Gillette Right Guard, Camel Filters, the filter cigarette that was born rich, and by King Black Label. Why not enjoy one right now? Well, it's like an echo of the first game. The starting pitchers, Dave McNally and Don Drysdale, the six umpires meeting at home plate. Change of lineup cards between Captain Maury Wills of the Dodgers and the manager, Hank Bauer, of the Baltimore Orioles. For the Dodgers, down and one to go, only the wrong way. And for Baltimore, the day they are hoping for is here. Dave, loosening up to Charlie Lau off to the left, had a bad start, you remember, as he was very wild at Dodger Stadium, worked only two and the third innings, walked five men, gave up tombs, and had to come out. However, McNally's performance, as it lacked luster, was suddenly turned into a bright day more with a tremendous performance by Mo Drabowski who, although he was not ready for the last two games, is now ready today, if needed, to pick up. For the Dodgers, a do-or-die effort by Don Drysdale. Drysdale, you remember, in his first inning of World Series competition against Baltimore, gave up a walk to Russ Snyder and back-to-back home runs by Frank Robinson and Brooks Robinson. Drysdale has had men spoiled this year because of home runs, and the home run, the World Series, and the name Drysdale have gone together for this reason. Drysdale has allowed seven home runs in World Series competition. The record is eight. And the first man to against Don Drysdale in the World Series, Hank Bauer, the manager of the Baltimore Orioles. Drysdale, of course, well aware of the pressure that is on his shoulders, but he had to pitch some very big games at the end of the 1966 season and won all of them. And for the first time, did he lose, and that was the game in the World Series. The weatherman has come up with a beautiful day. Another bright sunshine in Baltimore, and another capacity crowd. The crowds for the series, we had 55,941 for the first game, 55,947 for the second. Yesterday, the largest crowd ever to see a baseball game in Baltimore. 54,445, and a crowd somewhere around that to see this one today. If the series is prolonged, if the Dodgers can win today, why, they'll be after each other again tomorrow. If not, the 1966 World season will be brought to a close. The Dodgers had to win some pretty big ball games, and most of them were played at home. And Bob Prince, your Pittsburgh Pirates, when they came to Dodger Stadium, in a must series, and the Dodgers won the first three, and I can imagine that the Pirates felt that it was a rather tough club under pressure. Yes, and they have often remarked that manager Harry Walker, who was in town covering the series, Ben, I mean, I don't understand their play in the first three games against Baltimore, and they never played that way against us. The Dodgers got more mileage out of blue pits, walks, infield singles, bunts, running bunts, than anybody we ever saw. That is, from the Pittsburgh Pirates side. So those of the National League who had it with the Dodgers know full well that while they are down, they are far from out. And I would feel the thinking on the part of the Dodgers is now Big D, as he's known, must come on to keep them in the series and then expect that tomorrow Mr. Koufax will hum up another great one, which has been the story of ball club. So a lot goes today on this one, no question about it. For Don Drysdale, who would be in excellent shape despite the fact 500 during the regular season, Drysdale, a fastball pitcher, but not the fastball pitcher of yore, 
He does not intimidate hitters as he did 10 years ago, 8 years ago, even as late as 2 years ago. Don, prior to this World Series, averaged to strike out an inning. That is not the Drysdale that we saw in the first game of the series, and it does not figure to be the Drysdale that we will see today. In one of his more important starts against the St. Louis Cardinals in St. Louis, in fact, it was his next to the last regular season, he went nine strong innings and struck out but one. And that more or less has been the difference in Drysdale this year than in years gone. He is not up there among the strikeout leaders. Oddly enough, the Baltimore Oriole pitching, which if not underrated, was certainly overshadowed by the Baltimore power, has been piling up the strikeouts. If you care for any stats at all, the composites, 21 Dodgers have been left on base. The Orioles have left 16. The Orioles have been able to hit with men on. The Dodgers have left them there. And, of course, there have been a couple of big plays in the series. Bob, despite the fact it has been all Baltimore, just going back to McNally's first game, remember the second inning with runners at first and second and the pitch that hit Barrow's bat. That might very well have been one of the big plays of the series. No question about that. And also, in addition to that, as I recall, look back on Red Homer, and then Parker had doubled into the gap, and Gilliam drew a base on balls. Then right after, McNally hit Roseboro's bat, which not question a wild pitch on ball three. Parker would have scored. Gilliam would have gone conceivably to second, maybe to third. Roseboro then hit a giant drive into right field in which young Snyder made a fantastic play. And right there, perhaps, was the very point of this World Series because there's no question but what the Dodgers would have been back in the ball game and with a very a big vengeance. And yesterday, they have the misfortune to see the ball hit by Parker again, go over the right center fence, and holding to a book rule double instead of the triple by a ball sent out by Willie Davis would have given him the run. So it looks as though the breaks that uh, the Dodgers have been looking for and got sometimes throughout the season and took advantage of it have not come their way thus far in this series. We only bring up these so-called breaks, and you can put quotes or to illustrate the fact that despite it is an overwhelming Baltimore series, they have won all three games. Yet there have been a couple of plays whereby had they gone the other way, it might very well have won one or maybe even two of the three. So they go into the fourth game with Baltimore's Dave McNally loosening. Dave going two and a third innings in his first venture, and Don Drysdale, who went only two innings his first time out and was charged with the back-to-back -back home runs and four runs. In the background, the Dodgers starting lineup being introduced to the crowd. Neither club has made any changes. That is to say, Hank Bauer goes with the ball club that he has used all year against right-handers. And in this, that means Russ Schneider in center field. And for the Dodgers, they're going with the same lineup that they have used all year against left-handers with the of John Kennedy at third base. The roar in the background for the Baltimore Orioles as they are being introduced as the Dodgers have already lined up in their road gray from first base towards home plate. And the manager and one of the great fellows in the game, Hank Bauer, trotting out to third base and from there on the birds will line up towards home plate. The vice president of the United Hubert Humphreys here with us today and 54,000 rabid folks sitting in the sunshine and waiting the start of the fourth game of the World Series. The Dodgers go into this game with a slip streak. Remember, they have not scored against Baltimore pitching in the last 24 innings. That would be the, the first game when Gilliam walked with the bases loaded. Now, the World Series record for consecutive scoreless innings is 28 by the New York Giants for Philadelphia A's, and you have to go back 60 years for that record, 1905. The Giant pitchers ended the series by pitching three shutouts in a row. That was the series record, and they won four out of five from the A's. The great pitchers of the Giants back in 05 were Christy Matthewson, Joe McGinnity, and Christy Matthewson again. A couple of other notes as far as the Dodgers' inability to pile up any runs or any offensive against Baltimore pitching. The record for the fewest runs by one team in a World Series is three by the Athletics against the Giants in that 05 World Series. 
The record for fewest runs by one club in a four-game series, four, by the Yankees against the Dodgers in 1963, which brings the point that the last time one club was able to sweep a World Series from another would be the Los Angeles Dodgers of 19 when they swept four straight from the New York Yankees. There have been nine sweeps in the series and two others which went five games and were decided by four and oh plus a tie. The umpires, John Rice of the American League, played umpire. We'll get to the other umpires in a moment, but right now, the large crowd standing for national anthem. Of U.S. police from Fort Meeting, Maryland. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. <laughs> series is seconds away and to bring you the play-by-play the voice of the Pittsburgh Pirates here's Bob Prince. Thank you very much Ben Scully and uh, hello again everybody beautiful sunshiny day as you know by now and the Dodger lineup is as that shortstop leading it off Maury Wills. Batting in the number two position playing center field Willie Davis in the right field third Lou Johnson the left fielder is Tommy Davis batting in the cleanup spot Jim LeFevre will play at second base and back in the number six spot. First baseman, Wes Parker. Batting seventh, catching the net is Johnny Roseboro. And batting eighth, John Kennedy playing at third with big Don Dryden. One in the series underway. The vice president of the United States... Honorable Hubert Humphrey just tossed out the first ball, and the Orioles take the field. <laughs> we'll set them up for you defensively in a moment. Uh, Bat up ratio at short. Schneider in center field. Robinson, Frank Robinson in right. Brooks Robinson at third. Boog Powell at first base. Kirk Blake in left. Johnson, Dave Johnson will be the second baseman. Andy Atten catching and on the mound, young McNally, who, as you know, as Ben told you earlier, appeared in game one, pitched two and a third innings, allowing two runs on hit, struck out one and walked five. He's a left-hander. That significantly, when McNally was pitching and walking all of the Dodger batters in the inning in which he was having all kinds of trouble, the third. And on the Dodger message board, they welcomed the visit to Dodger Stadium of the Astronauts and made the remark that one of the astronauts was the first man to walk in outer space and the press, uh, press box wag came up with the usual remark, McNally must have been wrong. 
This is the 28th year Gillette has sponsored the World Series broadcasts. And the 20th year Gillette has sponsored the World Series on television. There are almost quotes and bits that attend the World Series. And one of them, of course, occurred in Dodger Stadium again. Somebody asked Frank Robinson how he hit Sandy Koufax, and Frank very quickly replied, right-handed. So those are the things that come about in Ball Classic, and we're set to go now, and McNally with Echever and his battery mate. Robinson is at third, Aparicio at short, Jim Powell at first, Bleffrey in left field, Snyder in center, Frank Robinson in right. Preston Gomez coaching for the Dodgers at third, Danny Ozark at first. Plate umpire is John Rice of the American League. McNally goes to switch batting Wills, who's one for ten. Third baseman Brooks Robinson up tight. The outfield is not deep. First pitch is swung on and popped into shallow short. Johnson and Aparicio giving a chase. Coming up for it also, Snyder. Johnson. Dave Johnson, the second baseman, and that time converging on the ball. Aparicio, Johnson, Robinson, and Snyder. That shows you how shallow the Oriole outfielders were playing to begin with when they could all get there and any one of them could have cut it. Center fielder Willie Davis in, a left-hand batter, 1 for 12 in the series. The outfielder swung around to the right on him. 309 down both lines, 410 straight away. 380 to left center, right center. McNally's ball is butted foul behind the plate, strike one. Rounding out this excellent crew of umpires with John Rice behind the plate is Mel Steiner of the National League at first, Cal Drummond of the American League at second, Husky of the National League at third. Nestor Shalak down the left field line of the American League and Chris Pelicutis in right from the National League. 0 and 1 to Willie Davis. Fastball hit foul to the left side out of play. Strike two. For the on deck batter, right fielder Lou Johnson, whom, as Ben has told you on occasion, will swing right or left depending on the insertion of Tommy Day lineup. Tommy always plays left field and Lou then moves from left to right. No balls, two strikes, one out, and on the steps out. Time called immediately. The Dodgers approach this one knowing full well that like a dying man needs his breath, there is nothing after tomorrow unless they win today. No balls, two strikes. Loops back in its out of play. Etchebarren giving it a long, hard chase. into the seats about 40 rows. It's always been a source of amazement to many who observe the game of baseball how an outfielder can turn at the crack of a bat and run a ball down and then fruitlessly chase it back on one that they know is never going to be catchable except by a fan. Berg Powell, unassisted put out. So, uh... As Ben told you now on the pregame get together 24 scoreless inning. And should Baltimore put four more against the Dodgers here today, they'll tie a record. Good way about that if and when it approaches. Here is the right fielder, Lou Johnson, 3 for 11 in the series. They play him as a full hitter. McNally, the left-hander, comes in ball at the belt for a call strike, and Lou doesn't like it. Tommy Davis, the on-deck batter. There is no uh, winter here today. Two down in the top of the first, no score. The pitch, a uh, let-up delivery, hit foul over by the Oriole dugout along third. 0-2, so McNally's out in front. McNally in the first game walked Maury Wills, and he promptly stole second base, but then he got out of the inning. But then Lefevre, right-hand batting at that time, homered. And McNally has worst troubles right there. Here's the 0-2 pitch. I pop foul. This one's off to the right. Maybe play it. Comes over near the base of the railing. Leans in and gets it. So it turns out three up and three down. And we go now on half of the first inning. And it is Los Angeles nothing, Baltimore nothing. <laughs> Plymouth is up when you over the sea. Is up when you over the sea. Follow your Plymouth dealer today. 
This is Edie Gourmet for your Plymouth dealer. He's out to win you over for 67 with the most stories ever. A new supercar, the Belvedere GTS. Beautiful all-new Valiant. Your Plymouth dealer's all heart. Plymouth is out to win you over this year. Oh, I see your Plymouth dealer today. The Elegant Furies, all new Valiants and sports bred Belvedere's now at your Plymouth dealers. He's got what it takes to win you over. Dodgers now go to the defense. John Kennedy at third, Maury Wills at short, Jim LaFever at second, Wes Parker at first, Tommy Davis, Willie Davis, Johnson in the outfield, Drysdale and Roseboro the battery. Billy Hunter coaching third, and Gene Woodling at first, and the leadoff batter, Luis Aparicio. The shortstop, Green in the series, has two runs batted in in the series. Big Don comes in with a fastball, picks up the outside corner, strike call. They're straight away in the outfield to Aparicio. In fact, Johnson and Davis pinch in a little bit on Willie Davis, giving him some of No score as Baltimore now bats in the bottom of their first. Aparicio, Snatter, and Robinson. The 0 1 Don Drysdale's a let up punch foul. And uh, if you heard me stop the guys, I can steal them better than I can stop them with my mouth. That one like they got the old gunner. Strike two. Foul came right back. <laughs> Sir, I wasn't going to try to catch it. No balls, two strikes. That's the closest we've had one here in a series. So, 0 and 2 to Aparicio. Fouled him straight back on a fastball. Don Drysdale. You will remember, a pitch two innings for four runs and four hits in the first game, October the 5th. Nothing in two to count. Drysdale comes back with a fastball that's popped up. And Johnny Roseboro flips off the mask in foul territory to the right of home plate, accepts the charge. That'll bring up Russ Snyder, the center fielder, who plays there when a right-hander's going. He's one for three in the series and has one run batted in. You recall now, failure of Pittsburgh to defeat the Giants in the final game of 1966 necessitated then the pitching of Koufax in the second game, which then brought about a man by the name of Drysdale in the first game who was not rested, a curveball down all one. But that's all in the realm of what might have been, prognosticate as you will. Sam batting Snyder, uh, the outfield swings just a little right on him, not too much, a gap in left center field, and uh, Kennedy's up tight at the fastball, and he bunts it, might have been hit by his own pitch. He batted the ball on a burning play out in front of the plate and ran into it on a fair batted ball to catch you out. So, Roseboro gets the foot out. Hit by his fair batted ball. Or running into it, either way. And the out is made, and Roseboro gets the put out on the circuit. Two down fielder, Frank Robinson in. One homer and two runs batted in. And it was he who homered against Dale in the first inning. So with two away and no score, we're in the bottom of the first here in Bar. Drysdale's delivery hit high in the air into shallow left. Tommy Davis drifting over. Coming over by the warning, 300 uh, some odd feet away to make the catch. It sounded as though Frank Robinson hit that ball out on the end of the bat. Three up and three down at the end of one. Lost nothing, Baltimore nothing. A great new filter cigarette is born. Born with the name Camel. New Camel Filters. New Camel Filters. New Camel Filters. This is the one born rich. Gin taste. With that big camel head start on flavor. 
Now that great camel heritage of real comes to you in a great new filter cigarette. No other can compare in flavor. No other can compare in quality to new camel filters. This is the one you'll want to try. Try camel filters, the one born rich. <laughs> Ben Scully, along with Bob Prince from a medium in Baltimore. No runs, no hits, and no errors at the end of one inning for each side. Both starting pitchers doing a lot better than last time out. McNally wills and he stole second four games ago. And, of course, Drysdale gave up two home runs in the first inning, the first shot against Baltimore. No score into the second inning and back to Bob. Tommy Davis will lead it off. He's the left fielder batting in the cleanup position. McNally... The left ready to go. First pitch comes in, fastball, makes him button hook to get out of the way as it was inside. One ball and no strikes. Tommy Davis played right pull hitter. Aparicio back near the edge of the outfield grass. Robinson wide of third and rather deep. His next pitch is lined for right center field, running for it fast. Frank Robinson, and he'll make it. the risk of sounding as though it's strictly a partisan national league Sadgers have not been able to find a hole at the right time on line drive. No, and Frank Robinson got a fine jump on the ball. He was running full tilt just about as soon as it left the bat. Great outfielding play, and he made it look easy. Jim Lefebvre, the second baseman, he's one for ten in the series. They switched off-speed delivery down below the knees, ball one. Beautiful, sunshiny day in historic Baltimore. One ball, no strike. <laughs> let up is pull foul, and because of the let up, he got way around on it. One ball, one strike. They have some very book rules and ground rules here at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, and we shan't get into them and hope that we shan't have to explain any one of them. They have all sorts of things that could happen in this stadium. And, of course, they're well covered by rules. 1-1. One, one. Up under the channel there. Two balls and a strike. A little chin music. Two balls and a... No score. One out and on. Here's the pitch. And he's way outside with it. Ball three. Three and on. Lefevre now will look down to third to Coach Preston. The Dodgers, without question, will pull anything in the book in this one. They have to. 3-1 delivery is up high. He walked him. That is the first walk given up by McNally, his sixth in the series, and brings Wes Parker. Switch batting first baseman, batting in the number six spot, has three for ten. It was his double yesterday on the book rule that bounced into the right center seats. That denied him a triple and a Dodger run, as it turns out, for Willie Davis then, the ensuing batter, sufficiently deep that Parker would have scored. So they're going to play a little bit around to the left on Parker. McNally checks Lefevre. The pitch is in there for a strike. Tommy Davis lined a rope into right field, hauled in by Robinson to lead off this to that second, and now Lefevre has walked. There is no scores yet. And Wes Parker, no balls, one strike, the batter. Again, McNally checks Lefevre and the pitch. There's a high chopper, hit slowly toward shortstop. Aparicio gets it on for one. They'll not get Parker. The high bouncing ball, slowly hit, denied the fine inner defenses of Baltimore the chance to make the double play. So the out will go short to second. Fever. And no play at all on Parker. That'll bring up catcher John Roseborough, who's one for 11 in the series. And now in the Dodgers' second inning, no score. And the runner, Parker. They play him about straight away. Long high fly ball into right field. Appears to be getting under without any trouble. Gauging up against the sky, makes the catch, but retires the side. So far, the Dodgers in the second, no runs, no hits, no Baltimore area, and they strain one, and we go to the bottom of the second, Los Angeles nothing, Baltimore nothing. 
You know, the World Series marks the end of baseball action for the year, but football is shifting into high gear. And if you'd like first-rate seats for the top games and for less than 50 cents a game, I have a suggestion. Get Motorola Angular Color Television. You see, Motorola Color Television costs as little as 15 cents a viewing hour. Now, that's less than 50 cents a game, based on the price of a table and three-year contract. You get Motorola solid-state reliability at 17 critical points, numbered controls for easy color tuning, and the big, bright, rectangular picture pioneered by Motorola. This year, see football in color and enjoy it more. You'll also get a bigger kick out of your favorite at nighttime shows because they're in color, too. See your Motorola dealer and discover how you can have television for as little as 15 cents a viewing hour with Motorola. Now introducing the new flight of color TV. All right, we go now to the bottom of the Baltimore second inning. This game is scoreless. Neither side has had a hit. And standing in will be third baseman Brooks Robinson, who is two for 11. Plate umpire John Rice is asking that something be, uh, oh, a chair be removed to the lower left side of the Dodger dugout because it would be actually in the field of play. Drysdale working now to right-hand batting. Right. Swing and a miss. He started him off with a changeup. 0-1. Robinson, you'll recall, backed up Frank Robinson's homer against Drysdale in one, which tied a series record. Here's the 0-1. There's a ball hit up to him. Brooks Robinson is on with a base hit. Brooks Robinson took a fastball knee high and went with it. Boog Powell is stepping in. He's four for 11 in the series, a left-hand batter. And if you might sound as though he were being booed, that is not true. They're just going boog and drawing it out, much as they used to do with Pazuski in Cincinnati or with Moose Scourin when with the Yankees. Ball tailed away that time outside ball one. So the first of game four goes to Baltimore's Brooks Robinson. Boog Powell, one ball, no strikes. The outfield deep and round to the right. Short lead at first by Brooks. The pitch in there beautifully on the outside corners. That ball moved away from the big fellow, one and one. They used to play a lot in the outfield and first base, but they settled him down to first base as it better suited their plans, and he has been a very fine first baseman for Baltimore. One ball, one strike. Foul back. Good fastball, and Boog just got a pin and two. Drysdale went through the first inning, getting uh, the Orioles out in one, two, three fashion and in quick order. Then Brooks Robinson swung and missed a change curve, but laced a fastball up the middle for a single. So he's the runner at first down, and the batter Boog Powell, a ball and two strike count. Drysdale checks at first base. Brings it in there. Nine foul down the left field line. Deep into the lower deck. One and two. When I see a Boog Powell up there, I really have a vision of a former huge first baseman by the name of John Mize. One ball, two strikes. Drell comes in with a fastball that's up high, 2-2. Big Don, of course, would like to get Powell to hit the ball on the ground and preferably right near somebody so they can double play. Ball, two, strike two. Powell isn't going to set any world speed records in running. But an awful lot of times he just trots. Strike. Drysdale checking for the sign from Roseboro. Characteristic pose, the way he looks in. 
Uh, Don on the 2-2 brings a curveball in. He stuck him out swinging him a little bit off that breaking ball. And Big Don picks up his first strikeout. And now, left fielder Kurt Bleffery, a left-hand batter, will end in. There is no score. One down in the Baltimore second inning. The runner at first, Brooks Robinson. A left-hand batter, 1-4-11 in the series. The outfield over shifting on him. To the right, they gap him in left center, and Tommy Davis gives him a bat a left field line. Reminding you now, 309 down both lines, 410 straight away with an inner wall involved. Drysdale now to the set position. Check it first and goes over there, and a quick tag by damage as Brooks Robinson dives back in headlong. Leffrey stepping out for a moment. They'll always question whether he's out of the batter's box or not. He stands very deep in it. Here's the pitch. And this one is a curveball inside. Low, ball one. Many of uh, the umpires will take and erase the chalk line out. It's of lime, and they don't want uh, throwing balls into the dirt, kicking that lime up into their face. It doesn't take them long to eradicate the line. One ball and no strike. Brooks Robinson opening with a single, remaining there on a strikeout to Boog Powell. Again, Drysdale from the belt. Comes in with a fastball, and it's pumped foul for deck off third. First inning went very quickly. Three up, three down, no score there. The Dodgers had just a mile foot going when Lefebvre... But he was out on a force play, so actually nothing happened there in the Dodgers' second, and they're still looking for a hit and run. Robinson at first on the single, one out, no score in the ball. One ball, one strike, and a throw to first, and Brooks is back. Drysdale has a very quick move over to first. One and one. Pitch to Bluffery. Yes, it's a foul behind the plate. One and two. Ben said earlier, the weatherman has certainly been with an ideal, beautiful day here in the city of Baltimore, where another jam-packed audience on hand, including the Vice President States, who threw out the first ball. One ball, two strikes. Vice President, be it known, however, basically Minnesota twin fan. One ball, two strikes. The pitch, side, two, two. Johnny Roseboro is probably the most quiet of all the catchers, but is one of the most durable of all the catchers, and I have yet to talk to any baseball player that's ever slid into him who didn't say somebody always got hurt, but it was never Roseboro. Two balls, two strikes. High foul coming back out of play. Two, two. There was a time when I thought Roseboro might tragically have been injured when one of his present teammates, Dick Stewart, was batting. And him a foul ball that came run off the bat and went right in between the face bars of Johnny's mask and struck him between the eyes. Luckily, it didn't injure him, and he was able to remain in the game. But it came awfully close to uh, being very injurious. Two balls, two strikes. Dale checking. Sends it just low, ball three. Now we'll watch Brooks Robinson for you. Three balls, two strikes. Robinson, the runner at first. One out, no score in the Baltimore second inning. So Don Drysdale has his first 3 2 count in the game. Wills is hollered in behind his glove, something to Lefevre. Setting themselves up for uh, how they'll cover if they have to. Drysdale checks it first, there, and it's inside ball four. So Robinson goes to second unmolested, and Bleffery drops. And that is the first hit issued to Baltimore, and the batter now is Davey Johnson, the youngster who has been a surprising hitting sensation in the series thus far, four for 11. A right hand batter. So Brooks Robinson at second and Kurt Bleffery at first.
Referee doesn't carry the high season average, but if you get him out, you get him when he's hitting your strike. There's a chopper hit down toward Lefebvre. Turns, gets it on the wheels for one. On the first base, a double play. A brilliant execution by Wills as Bluffery really put a roadblock on him to get him out of there, but he got the throw away anyhow. None hit, no errors, and one left. At the end of two full innings of play, Los Angeles nothing and Baltimore nothing. So, you know, it's great to be in. Well, which one, Bob? Baltimore or Los Angeles? Well, right now, I mean Gillette Foamy. Uh oh, I might have known. <laughs> yeah, well, you should have. The big winner in the Shave Cream League. Foamy's instant lather sets up your beard for your blade like no other shave cream you ever tried. Nobody makes a Foamy. Oh, you mean so moist, so rich, and so creamy. Right you are. You get together with a winner every time you shave with Foamy. Well, nobody makes a leather like Gillette. By George, I think you've got it. I think I'll get it. Foamy by Gillette. And while you're at it, bring home the right guard. Talk about popularity. Guard Power Spray Deodorant is a six-to-one favorite with men. Six-to-one. Big favorite with families, too. Right guard is always the per personal deodorant for everybody because nothing touches you but the spray itself. Just two seconds gives you 24-hour protection. Lasts far longer with regular use, too. Yes, Gillette Right Guard. So effective, it's the world's best-selling deodorant. Don't be without it. Scoreless at the end of two with one base hit Going for Brooks Robinson So as we go to the third for more play Let's get right back to Bob All right, Ben, and standing in now That was a sparkling double play Because it was a chopper hit by Young Johnson Who can move getting down the line But he turned and made a nice throw to Maury Wills And then uh, Mr. Bluffery came running right in And he wasn't going to do much in the way of a slide Kennedy takes the low delivery from McNally Many times, you better, uh, if you don't want to be deep wills throwing, you had better be able to tunnel somewhere or burrow under a sack. Because he came across that bag and he let it go for that great double play. One ball to no strikes to third, leading it off to the Dodgers. Long, high fly to left, and it's got plenty of distance, but it's going to hook foul into the upper deck. fans a little apprehensive, but from our vantage point here, there was no question but what it would be a foul ball. Bunted right through that one, one ball and two strikes. McNally on the one two to Kennedy. Her ball looped out off the right side and dropping back for it. Johnson. Second baseman Johnson getting that little looper. We will be back on side two to continue the game. Dodgers have now gone through 26 scoreless innings. Fast approaching a record they would like to reverse and uh, run away from. Have not scored in the last 26 innings since the third inning of the first game. The series for consecutive scoreless innings is 28 by the New York Giants staff against the Philadelphia A's in 1905. Asdale takes ball one. Don's a very fine hitting pitcher. Used many times by Walt Alston as a pinch batter. McNally works to him. Hits it foul right up over our head, one and one. They're quit in Drysdale. The word I don't believe was, I don't think he'd understood it, or understand it if you put it in front of him. One ball, one. One out and none on in the third, no score. McNally's chair ball hit off the left side. Aparicio waits for it, digs it out of his tummy, throws it, and there it's away. Two down, and now Maury Wills, who popped to second base, and will stand in. Dodger third inning, scoreless ball game. Dodgers looking for their first hit. They have one. Brooks Robinson, a single up the middle. Maury Wills. A 
come in very shallow in the outfield and pinch Robinson and Bleffrey in on Snyder and give him offline. There was a strike. It was called. As an example, if you're just tuning in in the first inning, when he popped up into shallow center, really just behind second, Aparicio, Johnson, Snyder, and Robinson all could have caught the ball, showing you how shallow they play. No balls, one strike. And there's a chopper down toward third. It's backhanded uh, by Brooks Robinson going foul. Oh. Baltimore does not deploy, at least in this park, the ship in the outfield on Wills they did in games one and two, which is referred to a lot as the Richie Ashburn ship, where they move the left fielder right on the line. He's up there now, right-handed. If he gets a chance right left-handed, they might swing all the way around. A ball outside, one and two. So as a right-hand batter, they figure him to go all, almost always to left and never to pull, and as a right-hand batter, they defense him in such a way that he's, they're straight away in all departments. One ball, two strikes. 1-2 pitch, up high to the air, and looks like Edwin has a play. It's right in behind home plate, spins around, the mask is off, he's there. 27 scores, three up and three down. And we go now to the bottom of the third, Los Angeles, nothing, Baltimore, nothing. This is Joe Garagio. You know, my work gets me around the country a lot, and wherever I travel, someone always says to me, Joe, I hear you on the radio talking about customer care price for Plymouth dealers. What does customer care really mean? Well, I always tell them that customer care means just this. Chrysler Plymouth dealers care about their customers as well as their cars. There are a lot of dealers who know cars, but very few of them know people and cars. And this is Chrysler Plymouth dealers are different. They know how important a friendly greeting can be, how most people don't like to wait for, for service, and that most people like to be treated like well, like people, they treat you as a friend, not as a stranger. And they see to it that your car's service is cool, with certified service, no less. And when you walk out, they don't forget important things like thank you. And that's what we mean by customer care. It's a philosophy of doing business that makes all the sense in the world. And exclusive at your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. I wonder why everybody doesn't do business with the third, no score in the ball game. Baltimore with one hit. Andy Etchebar, the eighth man in the lineup coming up, so let's hop right back to Bob. Etchebar on one for nine in the series. And a right-hand batter. Better than average speed for a catcher, normally because of the fact they always have to crouch down. Strings are foreshortened and they're un unable to run. Of course, he's not very old. He'll get there if he stays long enough. A bunt down first base. Don Drysdale was over quickly to cover as Roseboro came out, but the ball beginning to roll foul. He let it go. Strike one. It's all a matter of time before a catcher will turn from a pacer to a dray horse. <laughs> And that's only natural. Don Drysdale trying to come back. In the game, the Dodgers must win. And uh, they feel that they can get by Baltimore today, that Mr. Koufax will return the series to Los Angeles. Here's the order. Etchebarren checks off it. A ball, one and one. No score. Etchebarren leading it off in the Baltimore third. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball. He looked like he took a little off it. One and two. One ball, two strikes. Straight away in the outfield, Andy. Takes that curve ball. He tried to save it, but I think it was in the strike zone according to the play, John Rice. So Don Drysdale has his second strikeout. That'll bring up Dave McNally. Don strikeout, of course, only worked two innings in the first game. McNally gets a nice hand. 
Shallowing up in the outfield to him. He bats unlike he's up there right handed. Drysdale comes in and he's low and outside a ball. One ball and no strikes. Tommy Davison left, Willie Davison center, Lou Johnson in right. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Into the dirt, low ball two. It's the bottom of the third. There's one away. There is no score. Orioles in with one hit. Dodgers still looking for theirs. Oh, two balls, no strikes. Drysdale working now to Young McNally. Sends it on the inside corner for a called strike, and it's two and one. Should Drysdale and the Dodgers be victorious today? Two balls. One hopper, two hopper, back to Don on the mound. He throws on to Parker, two away. Then Koufax on Monday able to do it. That would, of course, be tomorrow. Tuesday would be the travel day, and the sixth and seventh games, if necessary, the seventh would be at Dodger Stadium. As air time will be at 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Air time actually at 12:45. The game itself at 1 p.m. Daylight Savings. Pitches outside a ball, one and zero. Drysdale with a wind up and the pitch right through the middle. He took it for a strike, one and one. California fans, of course, listening or viewing the games or naturally see these in the morning. But then when the Eastern broadcasters come out, one ball, one strike. There's a long fly ball down the right field line. Lou Johnson hustling over on the warning track right corner, and he makes a fair ball catch and then bounces into the protective padding, and that retires the side. Yeah, so it's three up and three down. And at the end of three full innings of play, Los Angeles, nothing, Baltimore, nothing. A great new cigarette is born. A new filter cigarette whose very name stands for her. New Camel Filters. New Camel Filters, the ones you born New Camel Filters. This is the one born rich, rich in taste. With that big camel head start on flavor. Now that great camel heritage of real taste to in a great new filter cigarette. No other can compare in flavor and quality to new camel filters. This is the one you'll want to try. Right camel filter, the one we pause station identification. This is WGY, WGFM, Schenectady. If you've grown up around here, chances are you take Saratoga Vichy for granted. Well, don't. What you're being so blasé about happens to be one of the most extraordinary natural products in all the world. People send for it from all over, both for its curious taste and for that remarkably long-lived carbonation the Vichy people are always talking about. Saratoga Vichy, the only mixer we know of that people built a city just to be near. Lee Davis leads off the Dodger fourth. This ball game is scoreless. McNally, the left-hander, to the left-hand Davis, and he takes it low, ball one. One ball and no strikes. Outfield around to the right a little bit on Davis. Third baseman Brooks Robinson. McNally's delivery slides in and over for a call strike, and it's one and one. Lou Johnson, the on deck batter. One ball, one strike to David. Now the 1 1 delivery, a swing and a miss. One and two. Cross fired a little bit. Saying a little while ago about the 
Dodger fans and all listening to the ball games, they'll hear them in the mornings. When the Eastern casters come out and play the Dodgers at night, then the Eastern fans get a delightful treat. They hear their game starting at 11 at night and in the morning. Hey, the strikes out swinging. So McNally gets his first strikeout. And now will be Lou Johnson, who fouled out to catcher Andy Echeverry. Dodgers are one inning away. If they don't score here, I'm tying a record of the most innings without scoring in the World Series. A record they dearly love to forget all about. McNally works. Spikes in an off-speed pitch. He uh, took a little off his breaking ball that time. Got Lou well out in front of it. No balls, one strike. One out, none on. In the fourth, no score. Hard wrap into left. And coming up for it is Kurt Bleffery. Johnson rounds first in a sudden hurry. Scrambles to get back in there. Dives in headlong and just does make it. He must have gone up about 15 feet. If Bleffery had bobbled that ball, he'd have been on his way to second. But instead, as he started to come back, as though he lost his footing momentarily, had to dive back in and now is taking all the infield of Baltimore right off his clothing. And relay throw was bang, bang. He got back in safely. So the Dodgers get their first hit in game four. Now they started him off with a change curveball and got him to swing. Came back with his hummer and Lou changed speeds on it and sent it into left field like a rocket. Here's Tommy Davis who lined into right field in the second inning for an out. The outfield right away. McNally checks on Lou Johnson. The pitch. Swing and a foul coming straight back. Strike one. A bit of a gap between Schneider, the center fielder, playing straight out, and Bleffrey, who is shading over toward the left field line. No balls, one strike. Davey Johnson well over toward the uh, second with Boog Powell holding on the runner, Lou Johnson. There's a ball bounced slow at third and then going foul. Johnson's all the way around the third, practically. He's a very... Said it took him long enough to get here. He can't see any reason why he shouldn't keep moving them out. No balls and two strikes now as he cuts the diamond. There is no score. We're in the top half of the fourth inning. Willie Davis opened the frame with a strikeout. And then Lou Johnson singles sharply to left for the Dodgers' first hit. Might have heard a round of applause on the young National League bat boy, the youngster who earlier in his life was very severely burned. His hands were burned off him, and he has hooks. But he is wonderful. He had his picture taken with a vice president, and he can do all sorts of things, play golf, though he has not allowed the handicap of losing his hands to deter him in any way. And, of course, he's a great favorite with Baltimore fans. No balls, two strikes here to Tommy Davis. Lou Johnson on just by about two strides. Chopper hit toward short. Aparicio gets a bad hop, but gets it on to Johnson for one to first base. Double play. Aparicio to Johnson to Powell. And, and Tommy Davis is arguing to no avail. No runs are hit. No errors and nobody left. At the end of three and one half innings, Los Angeles nothing, Baltimore nothing. We asked the nastiest man in the world to ask some nasty questions about our beer. Uh, go ahead, nasty. What is all this eight brewery jazz? We're trying to get Carling Black Label beer into people's hands while it's still fresh and light. Oh, don't con me. Beer's supposed to be old. Well, that depends on where it gets old. In the aging tanks, good. But in the can or in the... Not good. There, well, beer slowly, surely acquires an... An unbeer like taste. Brewmasters call this taste ready. They'll call it flat. So, what do you do? Drink all your beer before it leaves the brewery? We brought our breweries closer to the people. This way, Blattle spends less time in warehouses and trucks. Hey, hey, my brother drives a truck. You got something against trucks? We love trucks. We love trains. We love planes. We just want our beer to spend less time in them. It'll taste better. Say. <laughs> Will you guys stop beating your wives? Yes, 
got an announcer here in the press box now in the radio TV area. That the Baltimore pitching staff has tied a World Series pitching record of 28 scoreless innings in World Series play, and we'll fill in more later on. Right now, there's a high pop hit up by Russ Snyder. La Fever on the second base side shakes his eyes, and it's one away. Still working here. Russ Snyder now is over to it. Here is Frank Robinson, who hit what appeared to be a slider off the end of his back, ripped it out into left field, didn't get all of it he wanted, and Tommy Davis hauled it in on the warning track. The outfield around to the left to Robinson, the right-hand batter. Long drive to left field. Way back, way back. Hits it, hit back. One left. Robinson in, he singled, takes it high, ball one. Now Don Drysdale has just tied a record that he didn't want to tie for the most home hundred in series competition, eight. And that was the eight that he's given up. Her ball hit down toward third. Bad hop. Kennedy comes up and out of his stomach, throws across, and he's got him in there two away. So Frank Robinson gives Baltimore a lead of one. His second series homer, which is the eighth, turned by Don Drysdale. Five other pitchers have uh, done that Burley Grimes, Charlie Root, Allie Reynolds, Don Newcomb, and Whitey Now Don Drysdale. Here's Boog Powell, who stuck out in the. Moved it inside the ball. The ball that. Frank Robinson hit appeared to be a waist-high fastball right out over the heart of the plate. He got all of the wood he wanted on that one and then some. He really tore it apart, way down the left field. Ball two. If it had a tendency to go foul, it never had a chance. Two balls and no strikes. Two down, one to nothing, Baltimore in the bottom of the fourth. nothing. Here he is again with another story, our favorite umpire, Nick Prowler. One night in Pittsburgh, the son known as the Ape Man, on account of he's not a very dainty performer with the glove, lets a ground ball bounce off his chin. It raises such a lump that the next day he cannot shave. I hear of this and offer him my new Gillette Techmatic razor, which he graciously declines. Beat us, go feed your guide dog. Ape Man, I reply. The Gillette Techmatic Razor just out has the lightest touch in shaving. Super stainless steel edges are coiled and sealed inside a cartridge, like film in a camera. Each edge lasts weak. Then, flip the lever and a new edge locks in place. The Gillette Techmatic ends blade handling forever. Well, the ape man, he gets a perfect shave from the Gillette Techmatic and does not even cut his bump. Ump, he says to me, you are a humanitarian. Ape man, I reply, say that on the field, and you're out of the game. Tim Lefebvre stands in, and McNally's in with a strike. Lefebvre walked in the second inning and was forced. One to nothing now into the tight Baltimore leading. 
There's a drive out into center field for a solid base hit off a hanging curveball. So the Dodgers have their second hit. Ben Scully, they're still buzzing about that sensational catch by Willie Davis. I think one nice thing about it is it's the same man. It's the same man who was called a, a little league outfielder by some folks for dropping two fly balls. And from one game to another, I'm sure glad he got off the hook. I am too. As we said before, nobody likes to wear horns except four-footed animals and a mother. Here now is Wes Parker. Ball outside, 1-0. Not as familiar with the Dodger ball club as Ben would be, uh, forcing him to a part of their lineup where they might not be able to run and hit or hit and run quite as much. But we'll watch the favor nonetheless, because you have to pull all stops to get back into this World Series. Trailing nothing to one here in the top of the fifth. McNally, one ball, no strikes. Sends his curveball, ball two. It appeared he hung his curveball to the fever, and he really ripped it up the middle. And is now up, so that this proves that Walter Austin is ready to do anything at this point or any point. Two balls and no strikes. They'll have to get down the lineup a little bit before they would bat for Drysdale. Two balls and no strikes. The look at first to the fever by McNally. And this one slides in there at the knees for a call strike, one and one. Of course, manager Austin is saying that he wants to be ready in the event he has to hit for Dunn. But by the time you get to Don, it's conceivable the Dodgers could be tied or ahead. And that, again, would change the thinking of manager. But the big thing in this game is be ready. Two balls, a strike. Bounce toward third. Bush Robinson off to the left, a fine play. On to Johnson. Double play. What a double play. see now why uh, they say that Brooks Robinson is one of the greatest third basemen in baseball. He just went out to the left like a cat, stumbled as he came up with the ball, made a perfect throw to Johnson chest high so they could hit that bag, dance away, and come over to first for the double play, and he got it. Roseboro takes a call. That is the second double play now for Baltimore, whose team led in defense uh, statistics this year. And they one and nothing Baltimore, two down in the top half of the fifth. Strike two is called to Roseboro. A soft curveball in and over. 0 and 2. If McNally gets out of this inning, the Baltimore pitching staff will assist a new record of scoreless innings in World Series play, 29. He is one out away from that. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Breaking ball outside, a ball and two strikes. A tremendous home run by Frank Robinson, his second in the series. Deep down the left field line. And then a great catch. Strike three is foul in the book. No runs, a hit, no errors, and nobody left. At the end of four and one half innings, ball to war one, the Dodgers nothing. Plymouth is out to win you over the years. Plymouth. Is out to win you over the chair. Follow your heart to your Plymouth Steelers today. Hi, Edie Gourmet for your Plymouth Steeler who got to win you over with a longer, more luxurious 67 Fury. And you look at Fury as the day you'll give in to Plymouth. See your Plymouth Steeler now. He's all heart. Plymouth is out to win. Follow your heart to your Plymouth dealer today. The luxurious new Furies, 25 models strong, are on display now, but be prepared. Plymouth could win you over today. Chrysler also brings you the Bob Hope Chrysler Theater on NBC television every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Central Time. Baltimore leading here, one run, two hits, no errors. The Dodgers, no runs, two hits, no errors, as we now move halfway part of this very thrilling World Series game, game four, the game the Dodgers must win. No one knows it better than the man of all the building action, the veteran voice of the Los Angeles Dodgers, Vince Kelly. 
Thank you, Bob. And hi, everybody. Kurt Bleffery to lead it off as Drysdale goes to work in the bottom of the fifth inning. And the breaking ball in on the hands, ball one. Bleffery walked in the second inning. The Orioles are run on to the home run by Frank Robinson. The Dodgers, no runs, two hits. Bleffery, left hand hitting left fielder, waiting. Drysdale back with a changeover for a strike. Kurt likes the fastball, and the Dodgers throughout the series have thrown him breaking stuff and changes. Drysdale has done both in the count, one and one. Don comes back to the plate, fastball, swung out and missed, strike two. The infield swung around towards first and the outfield to right. And for Drysdale, this could be his last inning of work. He is due to bat second when the Don in the sixth inning. One nothing Baltimore in the bottom of the fifth. Drysdale reading rope, setting a target. Drysdale has walked one through four innings. Fastball is down and away. Ball two. Two and two. Drysdale has struck out two. Dave McNally has struck out two. Walked one. Allowed two singles. And, of course, the defensive play by Willie Davis. Goal tending to take a home run away from Johnny Powell. 2-2 two, two pitch on the way. Curveball and a high fly ball to right field. It's down the line. Lefevre out and Johnson in. And Lou on the line makes the catch in fair ground. So curve fly ball to Lou Johnson in the right field corner. One away. And the batter will be Dave Johnson. Dave Johnson, four series. Hit into a double play in the second inning. Right hand hitting second baseman. Who has been involved in double plays for the Birds. Baltimore with two double plays today, three in the last two days. Johnson takes a strike, and Baltimore's turned in four days in the series. 0 and 1, the count to Dave Johnson, one out on the fifth, one to nothing, Baltimore. Drives back to the plate, fastball, pull foul, outside of third to Billy Hunter. 0 and 2. Billy, who was once sold to the St. Louis Browns by the Dodge, afforded $75,000. He still has pretty good hands. 0 and 2. Andy Barron on deck. At no time in the series have the Dodgers been out in front. They have been behind the national anthem almost of the first game. The strike two pitch is a curveball hit in the air to left center. Tommy Davis comes. He's there to make the catch. Well, maybe not quite. And the batter will be Andy Etcher Barron. Was caught by a man 10 miles from the rear of the stand. Andy Etchebar, right handed in catcher, struck out in the third inning. He's 0 for 1. If you are interested in ballistics on Frank Robinson's home run, a fan 10 rows from the top caught it. The pitch to Etchebar, breaking ball down in a 1, 1 and 0. When the Dodgers hit in the sixth, they are due to send up John Kennedy, Don Drysdale, and Maury Wills. Drysdale back to work in the right-hander's 1-0 pitch, fastball on the outside corner for a strike. He is a much pitcher than he was in the first game of the series, but he has still been bitten by the home run ball, and McNally has been superb through five innings. 1-1 pitch, fastball fouled away. He didn't get around on it. 1-2. The height of the wire fence is 7 feet. 1-2 the count to Andy Etchebarren from nearby Los Angeles in La Fuente. Right hand hit. Drysdale reading Roseboro. Now Don's 1-2 pitch on the way. Fastball, a half swing, strike three call. So Baltimore out in order in the fifth. And the score at the end of five innings of play. Baltimore won, and the Dodgers nothing. A great new filter cigarette is born. Born with Camel. New Camel filters. New Camel is the one born rich. New Camelers. This is the one born rich. Rich in taste. With that big Camel head start on flavor. Now that great Camel heritage of real taste comes to you in a great new filter cigarette. No other can compare in flavor. No other can compare in quality to new Camel filters. This is the one you'll want to try. Try Camel filters. 
We pause 30 seconds for station identification. This is WGY, WGFM, Schenectady. Your radio has not gone cuckoo. That's merely the sound of Saratoga Vichy and its long-lasting fears. The story behind fears is even stranger than the sound. You see, nature carbonates Saratoga Vichy, giving it a perky little fear. Incredible staying power. It keeps drinks fresh far longer than club soda or any of the imitation Vichy's. Saratoga, the authentic Vichy in the yellow label. On Drysdale in the on deck circle and the wills. McNally's first pitch is punched down the right field line, but slicing as she goes in the corner foul and back into the lower deck. 0 oh, and 1. Bill Regan loosening up in the Dodger bullpen. And since he and everybody else in the ballpark can see Drysdale in the on deck circle, you wonder whether Phil is just throwing on his own. We'll see. Kennedy hit a towering foul in the upper deck left field in the third inning, but then popped out. Owen oh, to John. He's 0 for 4 in the series. Dave McNally. Left her into his windup. And the strike one pitch. Breaking ball. Swung on and missed 0 oh, and 2. I think that was his slip pitch. McNally with a three-quarter move. Fastball, curveball, and a good slip pitch. He has walked one man in five innings. In direct contrast to the five he walked in two and a third at Dodger Stadium. In the strike two pitch, fastball outside just to show it to Kennedy, one and two. McNally, uh, third during the regular season. He lost six. One two pitch on the way. Breaking ball, line to left for a base hit. McNally making a bad pitch, and he knew it. He kicked it to dirt. He got the ball up on Kennedy, and John hung it into left field. So the Dodgers. Get the leadoff man on for the second time in a row as Lefebvre opened in the fifth inning with a single. It's trailing one to nothing. That is a favorite weapon of theirs. Now that Drysdale comes up to the plate, Phil Regan stops throwing in the bullpen. Don is a good hitter. However, the birds expect him to bunt. Brooks Robinson up inside the bag at third. Powell are ready to push off the bag at first. The curve is a strike. Going one. With both Brooks Robinson and Johnny pudging the plate, Drysdale will not have much room to drop the bunt, and he backs out and has another look at Preston Gomez. The more a run on two hits, the Dodgers no runs on three hits. We're in the sixth inning, nobody out. The pitch to Drysdale, he flicks at it and misses for a strike. Now in a hole, 0 and 2. The Don leaning on his bad hand on his left hip, staring down at Preston Gomez, and we'll see whether Walter Austin wants him to try and bunt 0 and 2. If you mistake on Drysdale, particularly if you get the pitch up on him above the belt, he is liable to long ball you. And of course, McNabb set, looks over at first, back he comes, high and away. Ball one, one and two. Baltimore figuring that with two strikes, Drysdale will not bunt. So Brooks Robinson will death. Powell continues to hold Kennedy. John is not a particular base stealing threat. McNally, left foot on the rubber, has a look at Etchu Baron. The outfield straight away on Drysdale. McNally's one pitch outside, and he took a little off at that time and almost aimed it. In the count two and two. Crowd oohs and ahs. John Rice of the American League calling balls and strikes. We're in the sixth inning. Baltimore won, and the Frank Robinson's home run is second of the series and his 51st of the year, if you want to count the 49 he hit during the regular season. 2-2 Two -two pitch on the way. Fastball just low, and that's the one he wanted. McNally angry. He thought he had it at the knees with it, and it's 3-2. and two. Now we'll see if the Dodgers play run and hit. Kennedy, the runner, and Drysdale both checking with goal. McNally visibly upset. On that 2-2 pitch, he tried to sneak the pass ball over at the knees and missed. But here's a very big pitch now. We'll see what develops. Kennedy at first, hello, McNally said, checking. 
Kennedy goes. The pitch is swung on and missed. Echebarren juggles, throws. They get him. Andy Echebarren on the strike three juggled the ball momentarily was still able to throw a strike to, to, to nab the sliding Kennedy. A big play. K-2-4 if you're keeping score. And just like that, two out in the sixth. Two. The Dodgers now have been unable to get a man to second base. And here is Maury Wells, who popped up and fouled out. 0 for 2. McNabb fastball is hit to Brooks Robinson on one hop, and Brooks throws him out. For the Dodgers in the sixth inning, no runs, one hit, nobody left. At the end of five and a half innings, Baltimore won, and the Dodgers nothing. Insurance, tax statement, employee tag, I think that does it. Now, if you raise your right hand and repeat after me. Repeat after you what? The Carling philosophy. Carling what? Philosophy. Time, the maker of beer. Time, the maker of beer. Is also the great destroyer. Great destroyer. Shipped from city to city, stashed away in warehouses. Stashed from city to city, shipped away in warehouses. Even a great beer like ours. Even a great beer like yours. Ours. Ours. Would slowly, surely lose the taste that made it great. Would slowly, surely lose the taste that made it great. Good. This is why we brew black label. Good. This is why you brew black label. In eight breweries around the country. In eight breweries around the country. Hired. Congratulations. You're hired. Congratulations. With Ben Scully, Bob Prince speaking to you from Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, where the Orioles have hits, no errors, the Dodgers, no runs, three hits, and no errors. They have now gone through 30 consecutive innings without a score. And the Baltimore defense have pulled off three straight double plays, and they have sparkled behind McNally, who leads it off, and here's Ben. I'm Don Drysdale working on his opposing pitcher, Dave McNally. Right-hand batter, fouls a fastball off to the right 0-1. The crowd giving McNally a welder round of applause. Dave has been right on the plate all day. Walked just one man, and what balls the Dodgers have hit with men on base have been on. 0-1 the count to Dave. Hit back to Drysdale in the third inning. Outfield shades him a little bit right field. The strike one pitch on the way. Overhand curve for a strike. In the count, 0-2. One run, two hits for Baltimore. No runs, three hits for the Dodgers. Sparkling play on both sides. Here's John Noe. Curve ball over, strike three call. So McNally goes down on three for Don Drysdale's fourth strikeout. And the leadoff man, Luis Aparicio. Aparicio, right-hand hitting shortstop, fouled out to Johnsboro in the first inning. Hit a high, twisting fly ball down the right field line in the third, and Lou Johnson went right, right against the boards to make the catch. So Aparicio is 0 for 2. He is 3 for 15 in the series. Drysdale ready, starts him off with a fastball. It's lined to center for a pitch. Willie Davis plays it on a hop and gets it back in. That is hippie for Baltimore. It is interesting to know the Orioles have gotten six hits in two. They won one, one to nothing. They're leading the other one to nothing. Russ Snyder tried and actually hit the ball twice with his bat in the first inning and then popped up in the fourth. So the center fielder is open one for five. Drysdale set at the belt, turns and throws to first, driving Aparicio back. There has been a stolen base in the series at by Maury Wills. We'll see now whether Aparicio might be at the front end of a play as Drysdale is up on top and set. The pitch to Snyder, a strike. All in one to count. In the Dodger bullpen, Ronoski and Phil Regan begin to loosen up. Taranoski, the left-hander. On deck, Frank Robinson. One out, sixth inning, one nothing Baltimore. Drysdale set at the belt, delivers, and it's away. One and one. 
Light breeze blowing from the right field corner, slanting over to left. Not really hard enough to affect a fly ball. Kennedy is up a couple of steps, about even with the bag at third. The outfield bounced straight away, although Lou Johnson gives the left-handed Snyder most of the right field corners. Guys, there's 1-1 one, one pitch. Aparicio goes. A pitch. Go down to Wills. They've got him hung up. Wills to Parker. He's tagged out. So Aparicio going on a pitch out, and it went 2-6-3 from Roseboro to Parker. So we still have only one stolen base in the series. To try and upset Roseboro, Snyder waved at the ball, and he's charged with his count as one and two. Two out, six inning, one nothing Baltimore. When the Dodgers hit in the seventh, if you are not keeping score, Willie Davis, Lou Johnson, and Tommy Davis. Drysdale ended up one two pitch, fastball hit back to the box. Don has it, just lobs to Parker, and that'll do it. In the sixth inning for Baltimore, no runs a hit, no left. And at the end of six, Baltimore won. The Dodgers, nothing. Tube or bottle, Gillette heads up grooms like water, only better. Won't dry, won't plaster down. So men, take the pledge, use heads up. We will continue this game on the next cassette. Seventh inning, one to nothing in favor of Baltimore. The Birds with a run on three hits, no errors. The Dodgers, no runs, three hits, and no errors. For the Dodgers, Willie Davis, Lou Johnson, and Tommy Davis. Dave McNally comes to the plate. A drag bunt attempt is missed by Willie in the count 0 and 1. This grounded to Johnny Powell and struck out and made the defensive play on Powell's bid for a home run in the fourth inning. Willie is 1 in the series. Fouls it away. 0 and 2. He's standing back of the rubber, now looks into Etchebar, and the outfield fanned out on Willie. The strike two pitch on the way. Hit over the head of Aparicio into left center, but right there is Bleffery to make the catch for the out. Little fly ball, one out. He was jammed. Lou Johnson. Lou Johnson fouled out and singled. He's one for two, but was cut down as Tommy Davis hit into the double play in the fourth. The Birds have come up with three double plays today. Four double play teams played here, and five double plays in the series. And they lead one nothing on three hits here in the. Johnson a bunt in the air foul. That's your Baron gloves it. So quickly, two out in the seventh inning. Ball and the Dodgers nothing, and Tommy Davis coming up. And for the Dodgers, they have now set a record, and it is just getting longer and longer. They have failed to score in the last thirty and two thirds innings. Tommy Davis lined out to right, grounded into a double play. 0 for 2. McNally into his windup and delivers in the pitch at Tommy's right foot. Ball 1. Tom, right hand hitting left fielder. 
McNally's 1-0 pitch on the way. Swung on and missed. 1-1. One one. The National League's batting champion in 1962 and in 1963. And, of course, suffered the broken leg that kept him out of last festivities. 1-1 one one to Tommy Davis. As McNally's in with Etcher Barron. Dave comes back 1-1, one, one, fastball, and he jammed him, and he popped it up. Johnny Powell looks over at Dave Johnson. It's the second baseman for the Cavs. And the Dodgers roll over quietly in the seventh inning. And at the end of six and a half innings of play, it's Baltimore 1, the Dodgers nothing. This is Joe Garagio. Rule. Rules. Sometimes you form and sometimes you against them. But the world of sport would not exist without them. The rule book of a sport isn't just a set of laws made to be broken, but they're common courtesy. And if they aren't observed, the game would be chaos. And it's true in most everything we do, like driving, traffic based on common courtesy. And it's even true in business. The best businesses are run by the rules of courtesy, like your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. He calls his rule book customer care. What's that mean? Well, it means when you bring your car in for service, he's nice to you. Every courtesy is observed. Why? Well, because he wants you to come back. But he doesn't base his business on bedside manner alone. He's got certified service. Factory trained mechanics using genuine Mopar Chrysler parts. And fix only what needs to be fixed. So if you're less service in the book, see the guys who play by the rules with customer care. Your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. President of the United States as the guest to the Baltimore management and himself an about American League fan and basically a Minnesota Twin fan is standing up to stretch as they're ready to move it out. It's the Orioles. One run, three hits, no errors. The Dodgers 0-3-0 oh, oh, into the bottom of the seventh and then. All right, Bob. It'll be Frank Robinson who put the birds on the boards with his home run in the fourth inning, and that's the story. One to nothing, Baltimore. Great pitching duel between Don Drysdale and Dave McNally. The fastball outside, ball one, one and oh. Frank Robinson fly left and then hit one out. He'll be followed by Brooks Robinson and then Johnny Powell. Roseboro wigwagging sign to the mound, and Drysdale comes back with a breaking ball that is low. As Robinson started a swing, he held up, and John Rice did not commit himself in the count 2-0. and oh. The Dodgers are suddenly running out of time. Outs left to them. Drysdale is due to bat fifth when the Dodgers hit in the eighth inning. Don into his windup, and the two pitch on the way. Soft curve fouled away. Robinson way out in front of it, hit it off the end of the stick upstairs to the right. If you are throwing Frank Robinson a fastball, you throw it one of two places, either way inside on the knuckles or so far outside that he can't get it. But Drysdale got a fastball over the heart of the plate, and he hit it out inning. 2-1 pitch, breaking ball, swung on and missed, and the bat goes to the bat rag. 2-2. Two and two. So Drysdale has given Frank Robinson nothing but break here in the seventh inning. Now, plate umpire John Rice saying something to Frank Robinson. Robbie does not use any tape on the handle of the bat to get so he just picks up some dirt. A run on three hits for Baltimore, no runs, three hits for the Dodgers in the bottom of the seventh inning. It has been quite a game. The Orioles have left one man on base, and so have the Dodgers. Curveball got him swinging, so all breaking stuff is of Frank Robinson. One away. Five strikeouts for Don Drysdale, and here is Brooks Robinson getting a well-deserved round of applause for the great play he made on Wes Parker's ground ball in the fifth inning. Loosening up just in case in the Baltimore bullpen, right-hander Stu Miller. Drysdale's fastball, all one. Brooks Robinson, single to center in the second inning, grounded the third and the fourth, one for two. Drysdale comes back to him, 1-0, fastball, hit to the left of Wills, Maury over, grabs it at the belt, and flips to Parker for the out. Stu Miller, out Here is Johnny Powell. 
struck out in the second inning and hit the towering smash to dead center. It is 4-10 here at the stadium. Willie Davis went to the fence, was all set to coil and leap, and the breeze blew it a good five or six feet to his right. So then Willie had to go over to it and leap and was able to spear it. Drysdale ready in the pitch to Powell. Change up, hit off the fist, the middle. So Powell singles to center. Willie Davis gets it back in and hurry. So with two out, a single by Johnny Powell. And the batter, the left-hand hitting left fielder, Kurt Bury. For Drysdale, he's allowed four hits. Bluffery has walked and flied to right. Quite a game. Each side with one man left on base. Drysdale turns on the rubber, up on top now, and set at the belt. They're not going to hold Powell. The fastball is low, ball one. The understatement of the year would be to say the Dodgers do not expect Powell to try to steal. Want to know the count? Drysdale again set. And the 1-0 pitch to Bleffery. Fast low again. Ball two. Two and oh. On deck, the right-hand hitting second baseman, Dave Johnson. Run, four hits. No errors for Baltimore. One left. No runs. Three hits. No errors for the Dodgers. One left. Drysdale took off his cap, gazed out towards center field for a moment. Now back to the wars. 2-0, and oh, the referee. Infield swung way around to first with Lefevre playing a deep second base. Drysdale's 2-0 pitch, fastball over for a strike. 2-1. So in the inning, all breaking stuff to Frank Robinson, all fastballs to Kurt Bleffery. Parker going steady with the foul line, about three feet back of the bag at first. Drysdale to Bleffery, and it swung on and missed. Strike two. Two and two. In the eighth inning, the Dodgers will have more fever, Wes Parker and Johnny Roseboro. Drysdale peers into Roseboro, Bleffery waiting. Now Don is up on top of backward glance at Powell and the two pitch fastball fouled away. The only run of the ball game in the fourth inning is Frank Robinson hit a Don Drysdale fastball way back into the left field seats. His second home series, both against Drysdale. And for Frank Robinson, he's hit 51. 2-2 pitch to Bleffery. Curveball. Hit in the air to right field. It's playable. Lou Johnson is there, waiting and waiting, and makes the catch. So in the seventh for Baltimore, no runs, one hit, a man left. And the score at the end, Baltimore won. The Dodgers, nothing. <laughs> Whoa, 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 Winston tastes good. Like your cigarette should. When I do Winston, I change for good. Cause I got good taste, like I knew I would. Winston tastes good, right? When you change to Winston, change for good, cause Winston's good like a cigarette should. Winston tastes good like your cigarette should. Make your cigarette Winston. Winston. Prior to yesterday, there had been 368 World Series games and only two decided, one nothing by home runs. Now there might be two more back-to-back yesterday and day. And the fewest uh, hits 
is 22 in a series, and the Dodgers right now only have 15, so there are reversible records going on here, Ben. All right, Bob, it'll be Jimmy LaFever to lead it off, followed by Wes Parker and then Johnny Roseboro. Eighth inning, one nothing. Baltimore. Change up, swung on and missed. LaFever out in front of it. Switch hitting second baseman, batting right hand. He has walked and singled. McNally comes back to the plate, 0-1, and mid as he appeared to turn that over a little bit, almost like a screwball, 1-1. One and one. Dave McNally has limited the Dodgers to three hits, all singles, and has not allowed a man to get to second base through seven innings. The 1-1 pitch, whack foul, third, one hop at Kangaroos up into the lower deck, 1-2. and two. Lefebvre series has two hits in 11 at-bats. For the Dodgers, Lou Johnson has the most hits and has four. Here's the one-two pitch taken low and inside, ball two, two and two. Baltimore, a defensive measure here in the eighth inning. Paul Blair now in center field. Kurt Bleffery comes out and Russ Snyder moves over to left. The keeping score put Paul Blair in Kurt Bleffery's spot. 2-2 two, two pitch to Jim Lefebvre. Fastball high. He started to go after it and held up. 3-2. The Dodgers, trail since the fourth, have gotten the leadoff man on base in the fifth inning and again in the sixth. However, each time... The following man hit into or missed into a double play, as it turned out with Drysdale. 3-2 pitch. Fastball. Hit in the air to center field. Back goes Blair. Away back to the track, to the fence. Leaps up and hit. So Paul Blair, who was just put into the game by Hank Bauer, center field, made the perfect play as he went straight to the fence, turned, timed his leap, and hauled it in. Not quite as spectacular as Willie Davis' catch, but now in the waning moments of the ball game, it appears even bigger. Still one nothing Baltimore, and Parker fouls it away. So a fine play by Paul Blair in center field. Where Powell's ball was really kissed, that was not of Lefevre's better bolts, even though he hit it that far. The strike one pitch on the way to Parker. Swung up, and that was the slip pitch, and West was way out in front of it, 0-2. Oh, and, and West, like many of the Dodgers now, appearing to be pressing in high and away. Parker robbed of a hit by Brooks Robinson. Next one is low, ball one. The Dodgers, of course, now have only five outs left to them with one out. McNally stands back of the rubber, looks in to get his sign. Left hand to Ruddy in the one-two pitch on the way. High chopper down to third baseman Robinson. Brooks gloves it. him out. So two out in the eighth inning. Baltimore is nothing. And the left-hand hitting catcher, Johnny Roseboro, coming up to the plate. Roseboro flied to right and struck out. It's been a long series for Johnny. He's one for 13. Willie Davis has had the longest series for 15. Pitch hit fouled on the right field line. 0-1. One run, four hits, and no errors for Baltimore. The run, a home run by Frank Robinson in the fourth inning. No runs, three hits, and no the Dodgers. We're in the eighth, two out. McNally checking with Echibarra. Now Dave delivers fastball away. One and one. Roseboro, basically low ball hitter. 
But John, with bad hands, ever since the last two months of the season, and a painfully sore right... Blair shades him slightly towards right center. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Little high up around the two. two and one. Paid attendance today, 54,458. So we have three more here. Actually, 13 more than we had yesterday. Two and one to count to Johnny Roseboro. McNally comes back to the plate. Fastball grounded down to Dave Johnson, the second baseman up with it cleanly, and throws him out. The Dodgers are out in order again. Eight in a row retired by McNally at the end of seven and a half innings of play. Baltimore won, and the Dodgers nothing. You never know how huge this country is. You try to ship beer across it. It is so huge. Your beer is in a huge warehouse. You load these huge trucks right away. Huge traffic jams. And then the roads. You should see the roads. They are so long. Sooner or later, your beer starts to lose the taste that made it great. The Carling Black Label people couldn't stand still for that. Just came down. Buy a brewery here. Build a brewery there. Rebuild a brewery somewhere else. Think of it. Eight great breweries brewing one great beer. Carling Black Label. It sort of takes your breath away. Big D has only only one thing he can look forward to, and it's to stop Baltimore here in the ninth inning, and then go right on and hope that somehow or other uh, his team can scramble to get him back in the game with a tie or a row. It's one to nothing and a fantastic pitchy performance, Ben. All right, Bob, bottom of the eighth inning, one to nothing Baltimore. Dave Johnson, Andy Etchebarren, and pitch Dave McNally. Drysdale ready, starts him with a fastball away, ball one. Dave Johnson grounded into a double eye to left. Right hand hitting second baseman 0 for 2. A run on four hits for Baltimore. No runs, three hits for the Dodgers. Drysdale's fastball, hot and low, ball two. The Dodgers today cannot be accused of leaving men on base. They have left one man on base in eight innings. Baltimore leaving two. Full pitch on the way. Fastball over for a strike. In the count, two and one. Two and one. The count to Dave Johnson. Drysdale into his windup, and the two one pitch on the way. Fastball is low. Ball three. Three and one. Johnson is, is four for 13. Dave waiting, Drysdale ready in the 3-1 pitch. Fast for the batter, fly ball to shallow right. Lou Johnson coming in a hurry and makes the catch. So Dave Johnson, a fly ball to shallow right, one away. Drysdale has made one bad pitch, one pitch he'd like to get back. Second chance. That was the fastball to Frank Robinson out over the plate. And Robbie hit it deep into the left field seats. And that's the story. That, along with the tremendous performance of left-hander Dave McNally. Here's Andy Etchebar, and he struck out twice today. Drysdale comes to him with a curve, bunted in the air. Parker gloves it for the out. In fair ground, says first base umpire Mel Steiner. And now an ovation building for Baltimore left-hander Dave McNally. McNally right-hand batter, Drysdale, fastball is swung on and missed 0-1. Davis hit back to the box and struck out. Two out, 
Bottom of the eighth, Baltimore won, the Dodgers nothing. In the ninth, the Dodgers are due to send up Kennedy Drysdale Wills. Fastball is low, ball one, one and one. With McNally going, you think of possible right-handed pinch hitters. You have Dick Stewart, Al Ferrara, Jeff Torborg, Nate Oliver, and switch hitter Jim Gilliam. Slow curve is popped up. Wills goes out, turns now, and makes the catch. The Baltimore out in order in the eighth inning, and the score at the end of eight. Four one, and the Dodgers nothing. And now here's our favorite umpire, Nick Crone. Another anecdote. A particular first baseman in our league has what we call an early foot. He is also over friendly. One day he greets me with, uh, say, um, how may I ask is your dear mother? My mother was fine, I answer. And she told me to tell you that keep your bag. He does not phase. He tries again with, uh, they say you discovered a terrific new razor. They say, right, I reply. It's down the market, the Gillette Techmatic. It ends blade handling forever. Six super stainless theaters are coiled and sealed inside a cartridge, like film in a camera. Each edge lasts about a week. Flip a lever and a new edge locks in place. The Gillette can chop against the beard, but very, very light against the skin. Try it. Well, next road trip we'd be with. Hey, hump, the Gillette Techmatic is the lightest touch in shaving. You were right. Early foot, I rejoined. I am never wrong. Well, as it goes now, the Dodgers are down to their last inhalation. They're going to have to do it as they send Big Dick Stewart up there. And they'll come on with Ferrara in behind him. It's uh, into the top half of the Dodgers. No runs, three hits, no errors. The Orioles, one, four, and oh. And a fellow who has hit a lot of home runs against Baltimore and then has played in the American League, Dick Stewart is going to come up and bat in place of Kennedy, and then with Al Ferrer on deck. It's do or die for the news. There's no question about it into the top half of the ninth, and here's Ben Scully. All right, Bob, Dick Stewart. Quite a few home runs here at Memorial Stadium in his American League days with the Boston Red Sox is now asked to go up there and try and rip one for the National League. Stewart, right-hand hitter. McNally's pitch high and inside. Ball one, one and oh. So the Dodgers come up with Dick Stewart, followed by Al Ferrara, and then Maury Wills. Strange that Dick Stewart, who was cut adrift by the New York Mets, is now up here trying to hide the future of the Dodgers in the ninth inning of the World Series. Pass ball is swung on and missed. One and one. Of course, here in Baltimore, for every strike and for every out, the cheers will get louder and louder. And for the Dodgers, time grows shorter. Nuts remaining. One nothing Baltimore in the ninth. One one pitch, fastball foul back. In on the hands, one and two. For the Dodgers, this is their thirteenth World Series, and there are people who will remember when this story is completed. The Dodger record in their previous twelve World Series, they won four and lost eight. All four championships under the reins of manager Walter Alston. One and two, the count to Dick Stewart. Of course, here in Baltimore on this Sunday afternoon, they can't wait to holler. The king is dead. Long live the king. Because the Dodgers, champions of last year, have three outs left to them. Here's the one-two pitch to... In there, strike three, call. Four strikeouts for Dave McNally. One away in the inning. Here is Al Ferrara. Right hand hitting outfielder. Pinch hitting for Don Dreiser. McNally's curve is lined to center base hit. So Ferrara keeps the Dodgers afloat with a single. And the batter will be Maury Wills. Four hits for the Dodgers. Nate Oliver will now run Ferrara. Nate Oliver running for Ferrara. Here we go. 
One run, four hits, no errors for Baltimore. No runs, four hits, no errors for the Dodgers. And Maury Wells at the plate. He is 0 for 3 today. He has one hit in 13 at bats in the series. Johnny Powell holding the bag on Nate Oliver. And Dave McNally looks in to Eddie Getty's sign. The left hand to Ruddy. And the pitch to Wells. Fastball swung on and missed. Dropped by Etchie Barron. Oliver holding it first. 0 and 1. The only run. The home run by Frank Robinson in the fourth inning. And now it looms as the tallest mountain in the baseball world as McNally tries to make it stand up. McNally Bell looks at Oliver, checks again, and the strike one pitch, fastball low, one and one. Dave, of course, trying to make Wills keep the ball on the ground. Brooks Robinson doing a little housekeeping down there at third base. Powell holding the bag on Oliver. The outfield relatively shallow, with Paul Blair particularly so in center. Blair, of course, is up a couple of steps to handle a base hit and try and prevent Oliver to third. The 1-1 pitch to Wills. Outside and again dropped by Etchebarren. Ball two. So Andy's dropped two in a row. For a catcher. Two and one the count. Stu Miller, Mo Drabowski in the Baltimore bullpen, Phil Regan in the Dodger bullpen, and McNally and Wills head to head. Two one pitch to Morey. Fastball high, ball three. And now Luis Aparicio go to mound to counsel McNally. So Aparicio talking to Dave. McNally worked two and a third innings in the first game. And it's a tremendous eight innings today. No Dodger through eight innings has been able to get the seats. Three and one. The count to Wills, who backs out and picks up a handful of dirt. Ninth inning, one out. And Wills also had a peek at Preston Gomez. So did base runner Oliver. And McNally said, checking. Checks, Oliver does not go, and the pitch is ball four. And so for the first time today, Hughes have a runner at second. It is Nate Oliver, and a runner at first, Maury Wills. We will be back on side two to continue the game. For Dave McNally, his second walk. The other one came to Jimmy Lefevre back in the second inning. Willie Davis, who is the hungriest of all Dodger hitters, is the batter. Willie today grounded out, struck out, flied to left. He has one hit in 15 at bat. Willie's base hit left field in the first game against Mo Drabowski. Left-hand hitting center fielder. McNally in some trouble with one out. Hand is set and delivers, and it's very high. A nice save by Etchebarren. Ball one. The birds begin to stir. And nest Tank Bauer and his pitching coach, Harry Brackeen, have a little chat. While Drabowski and Miller heat up back of the left field fence. Nate Oliver at second, Maury Wills at first, one out, one nothing Baltimore in the ninth. McNally looks into Etchebarren, who wigwags a sign out to him. Left handers one old pitch. Willie takes a strike, breaking ball. One thing in McNally's favor, hard pressed inning, he was still behind on the batter. He came in with a breaking ball. One and one to count. The out in the inning, Dick Stewart struck out as a pinner for Kennedy. Ferrara hitting for Drysdale singled, and Wills has walked. One and one to Willie Davis. Nally is set, checking, checks again, now works the plate. Slow curve, hit in the air to Frank Robinson in right field. He goes back and may catch in the runner's hole. And 
the Dodgers have one out. Lou Johnson has four hits in the series. For a four team, he single the left field in the fourth inning. And as Johnson comes up to the plate, Harry Brakeen goes walking out to the to make sure number one McNally remembers how to pitch to him, and also to make sure he has enough left. Whatever Brakeen has, McNally he nods yes. Johnson today fouled out in the first inning, single to left field in, the, and fouled out trying to bunt in the seventh. All right, Brakeen goes trotting back to the Baltimore dugout. One nothing Baltimore in the ninth inning. The Dodgers have not scored a run in 32 and two thirds less consecutive innings. So you talk about a hungry ball club. They are down to the last bite. McNally straddling the rubber. Etchy Barron settles low in a crouch. Nate Oliver away from second. Maury Wills first, and the sun comes out. McNally is ready and delivers, and it's swung on and missed. Breaking down and away. 0 and 1. Johnny Rice, the American League umpire, cleans off home plate. On deck, Tom Davis. McNally again looks in to get his Sunday at you, Baron. 0 and 1 the count to Lou Johnson. The left hander ready checks the runners. The strike one pitch. Breaking ball. One on and miss. Strike two. Johnson with the goals and two strikes is standing in the way of the Baltimore Orioles being champions of the world. McNally is set and ready. And the strike two pitch swung on a fly ball to right center. It's playable. Paul Bearing and waiting. He's got it. Understandably so, as the birds have mobbed Dave Mickley and Hank Bauer and thousands of fans pour out onto the field and hail to the champs. The Baltimore Orioles knock the crown off the Dodgers' head and become the champions of the world for 1966. The final score, Baltimore, the Dodgers, nothing. We'll be back with the highlights of the fourth game of the World Series right after this message. Take charge. Move up to Chrysler 67. Take charge with looks that demand attention and get it. Take charge with V8s that range from big to biggest. And the biggest breaks in the price class, too. Chrysler's unique front seat called the three in one. Two hours, one minute, five foot wide seat the next. Take charge. Move up to Chrysler. It's easy. Four full Chryslers are now priced just a few dollars a month more than the most popular smaller cars comparably equipped. See your Chrysler dealer today. The totals on the ball game, Baltimore, one run, four hits, and no errors. They left two men on base. For the Dodgers, no runs, four hits, and no errors. They left three men on base. The Dodgers shut out again, wind up the series going 33 consecutive scoreless innings. The winning pitch, Dave McNally, who could go only two and a third in the first game. And McNally comes back to go all the way. Right now, pandemonium and joy in the Baltimore dressing room, and let's go down there and go with Chuck Thompson. It'll sound something like this, ain't the beer cold. The Orioles are the world's champions, and they have come into their clubhouse and now having a meeting in the corner with their manager, Hank Bauer, and let's get the first man we can get up here right now 
Oreo third baseman Brooks Robinson, there cannot possibly be a happier moment. Brooks. You're a long time for this since 1955 when it's signed, and it's, it's just great knowing you're the number one team in the world in 1966, and real happy to be on this club. And uh, we thought we were going to win when we started this thing, and we just got pretty good pitching. And these kids, they, they pitch like hell, and I'm just happy about it. Good for Brooks, and you fellas played perfect defensive baseball. You took advantage of every opportunity given to you. It was a great win for the Orioles in the American League. Thank you very much. Congratulations, right, Brooks sir. Robinson. We'll try to pick off a few more as they get up here, and we'd also like to get the commissioner of baseball, Commissioner Eckert, if he can come up here and just... Paulie, come on up here if you can for a second, please. Here's the young man who had the distinction of making the final out of the game, Paul Blair. He won yesterday's ball game with a home run. And, Paul, they have kidded you all year long and called you motor mouth. They won't live this down. I'm not going to... Good. Beautiful thrill. I can't talk too good right now. Uh, when the ball was in the air coming down to you, was it bouncing a little bit, Paul? No, it wasn't bouncing. I saw it all over. Well, hurry up and get here. And this is, this is a prize trophy that don't feel great from Paul. Never get this ball. Paul this is, is mine. Congratulations. A great win for you Thank and you, the Orioles. Charles. Thank you. Wonderful job. A job well done. Here's the young man who did it, Dave McNally, who pitched the shutout. Dave, uh, in the ninth inning, first of all, <laughs> let me get, you, get your breath a little bit. In the ninth inning, I was a little worried as I watched. I thought maybe Hank Bauer was on his way out. Any thoughts like that cross your mind? Uh, no. Uh, when two men got out, I thought there might be a chance. I knew left hander was coming up, and uh, Willie Davis was coming up, and I thought he'd leave me in for him. I knew if I got him out, I'd, I would get to Lou Johnson. Beautiful defense, wasn't it? What, what pitch was the best one for you today, Dave? Uh, I think I had both pretty good pitches, and that's what it takes for me to win. I have to have two good pitches, one to help the other one. Uh, another ball. Curveball fastball. When I had to get somebody out, I went mostly to my curveball. Dave, the Oriole infield played brilliantly behind you today. Everybody played brilliantly. Bob Blair jumped on the fence, caught that ball, and every time somebody got on, they made a good play and got a double play. Thank you very much, Dave McNally. Again, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Let's get the other end right up here. Come on over here. Here's the man who's done it, Frank. Uh, uh, I, I don't know whether you've had a chance to collect your thoughts enough to express yourself, but just how does it feel? There's no words to express it, Chuck. You know, you're just floating around here now, and you say great, that really doesn't uh, tell, tell your true feelings. You know, it just never happens. It only happens once in a lifetime, and uh, I'm glad I was in the right place at the right time. Well, Frank, uh, you've come on to great as Have you ever had a greater year? No, no. Well, here's no, your home run coming up right now on the screen. We're taking a look at it. And there wasn't any doubt in your mind about it being out. Not, no, sir. Well, Frank Robinson, you have had won a triple crown, of, and uh, I think that baseball will agree with me that you'll become the first player in the history of this valuable player in both the American and the National League. Keep my fingers crossed, Jeff. Tell me, Frank, how do you feel about Baltimore? Great, great. <laughs> this, uh, this a, we went out to win it for this, uh, Chuck, and uh, this is a great team. Let me say this is a great pleasure playing with these guys. They believe in themselves, and they went out and proved This really proves it. And uh, i just like to say... Uh, it was a great bunch of guys, and it was a real pleasure playing this year with these fellows. Frank Robinson, Whoa. congratulations again, and, and good luck. Thank you. Have Thank a you, nice, Jake. easy, cool sort of a winter. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be back here at the Oreo Clubhouse in just a moment. I've just run out. You've just run out? I'm out of cigarettes. Well, try one of mine. Try one of yours? Sure. Try one of mine. A Salem. Salem is the best of cigarettes. How refresh is your taste for you? Salem is the best of cigarettes. All of America's turning to. When you buy a best of cigarettes, don't take anything but the best. Salem is the best. Try one of mine. Turn Salem, turn to Salem for a taste that's springtime fresh. Well, the happy fellow right up here with me is the manager of the Orioles, Hank Bauer. I don't know whether he's the happiest or whether American League President Joe Cronin is, but first of all, Hank, you've been in this, you've had this experience as a player, now as a manager. I don't know whether the two or not, but I think people would like to hear what you have to say. I think this is the greatest thing that ever happened to me in baseball. I did play on seven, but uh, never as, uh, uh, as a manager like I was this year. We got good young kids. And let me say this, everybody says we didn't have pitching. We had a better pitching than they did. Uh, yeah, I think the record books will show that for many years to come. And we, we had a bunch of kids, too, Chuck, through 
Hank, and you did a 100% job yourself. Everybody you. in baseball recognizes that fact. You deserve a great deal of credit, and uh, I think it's a wonderful day. And, Jonathan, how does the American League Hank, feel about a four-game uh, American season? League congratulates Hank Bauer. He's done a wonderful job. They stepped out in league, and they knocked all the clubs off. We thought we were going to have a real good race this year, but old Hank stepped out, and he really showed the rest of the league, and I think he's proving the world and sweeping the world series. We're proud of you, Hank. Thank you very much, Joe. Hank, I, I don't want to, to dwell on a negative subject at all, but did you at any time think about going to McNally in the ninth inning? Yes, I did. Uh, I was a little afraid of Johnson, and Cat uh, uh, went out and asked him how he felt, and uh, said he was on. We went to breaking balls with Johnson. I think if he would have got on base, I'd have brought in Stu Miller to pitch to Tommy Davis. Hank Bauer, manager of the world champion Baltimore Orioles. Congratulations, Hank. Thank it's you. been a great You're privilege being right with you. And uh, uh, right now, uh, that's about the here in the winner's clubhouse, the world champion, Russ Snyder. Congratulations. Over here is Boog Powell. Come on in here, Boog. we got to leave right now. we got to turn things back to Kurt up in the uh, announce booth. Now, we'll continue with more World Series highlights in just a moment. We're in the home of a man with a most unusual hobby. Mr. Wilvers, you collect beer cans, beer cans. Uh, 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 tell us about them. Well, here's what we call a first day can. Pick it up in Atlanta the first day of the Carling Black Label Brewery opened up there. And uh, they slice another Black Label can from their Phoenix Brewery. The ring tab is on the bottom instead of the top. I see. Uh, <laughs> sort of a pop butter... <laughs> Here, Black Label Camp in that Baltimore brewery. Look, brewed and filled in Baltimore. Baltimore, L instead of R, you see. Mistake, very rare. Oh, yes. Here's a match block of six from Carling's Tacoma Brewery. Beautiful, isn't it? Uh, it uh, looks like a six-pack. Tish block of Tacoma. The show went off me $90 for these. I, I notice, Mr. Wilbur's, your whole collection seems to be Carling Black Label Camp. Ah, like as they're only human. After all, I do drink all this beer. And what does Mrs. Wilbur's think about your collection? She won't dust them. Well, ladies and gentlemen, very quickly, this was a very abbreviated series, and a lot of surprises took place, and there isn't any question about that. First games and two-thirds shutout pitching, a Moe Drabowski struck out 11, the Earls winning 5-2, to two, and the second ball game, a 20-year-older, Shut him out 6 nothing. The youngest pitcher a shot out in the World Series. Willie Davis committed three errors in one inning. That's a record. The Dodgers had six in one game. That tied a record. In the third game, 21 year older by the name of Bunker went out and won a ball game. And Paul Blair homered. That became then the third game in the history of the World Series ever to be won by a home. Ringle did it in 23. Heinrich in 49. Now Blair in yesterday's game. And they came right back today on back to backer and Frank Robinson hit a home run and uh, thus four games two back to back have been won by a score of one to nothing in all of the World Series games uh, on the vir by virtue of a home run uh, another record established the Dodgers the fewest hits by a club in the series the record was 22 and the Dodgers will be read books now as they had 10 13 a total all day of 17 or others of the series so they eclipsed the old mark of 22 being the fewest hits. Lots of tremendous thrills and great plays, and certainly they'll be talking a long, long time about this World Series, whereby they only used one relief pitcher, the Orioles did, and never one time called on a pinch hitter. 28 Dodgers going down on strikeouts, a good team that was supposed to have inferior pitching, but did not. So this World Series is all wrapped up, and it was tremendous. Our broadcast was authorized under broadcast rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other actions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Commissioner of Baseball is prohibited. Certainly has to, if I may tell it, to have been a great joy to work alongside our producer, Len Dillon of NBC, and our WBL engineer, Burt Bader. To Jimmy Simpson, who's invaluable on all of the stats and the records and everything set, along with Alan Roth and Kurt Gowdy, Chuck Thompson, and, of course, my running mate here, Vinsley, the veteran voice of the Los Angeles Dodgers. I gave you the score of this one. The Baltimore Birds made sure they weren't going back to Los Angeles, and they won it nothing. So they then extended the Dodgers' scoreless streak to 33, and that is another record. Baltimore wins this one, one more hits, no errors. The Dodgers 0-4-0. Two sensational catches, one by Willie Davis on a ball hit by Boog Powell in the fourth. Talk about a long time. Otherwise, they would have had a 2-0 lead. 
Then they came right back and repaid the compliment, and Blair, who's Homer wanted yesterday, down and saved a home run off the battle of fever as he leaped a good two to three feet higher than the fence seven feet tall at the 410 mark and hauled in what would have been the tying blast of battle of fever. So three double plays in a row, marvelous pitching by McNally, a whale of a world series, even though you are a Dodger fan. So that'll wrap up the fourth and final game of the 1966 World Series. The final score once again in the fourth and final game of the World Series here in Memorial Stadium, Baltimore, was one to nothing Baltimore. And now for Vin Skelly, this is Bob Prince saying thanks very much for being with us. This has been a sports presentation of NBC News.